Welcome to NASA Launchpad. I'm your host, Jamie. When you think NASA, what comes to mind? I'm sure you think space, experiments, amazing images, and satellites flying around and around Earth. But there's a lot more going on than you might know. Let's take a closer look at some of the things happening right now in a segment I like to call the three things you probably didn't know, but should know about the space program. <laughs> Not too catchy, huh? I'll work on it. Number three, Cassini Huygens. Sounds like a foreign language? Wow. The project is named for an Italian French astronomer and a Dutch astronomer, mathematician, physicist. I'll fill you in. Cassini Huygens is a spacecraft that NASA sent to check out Saturn and Saturn's moons. Launched in October of 1997, the spacecraft didn't actually arrive at Saturn until July of 2004. That's almost seven years. Evidently, the wait was worth it though, because we found out a lot of really cool things once we got an up close and personal look. When Cassini made its first flyby of Saturn's moon Titan, there was a lot of speculation. The Huygens Pro, which was just hitching a ride, separated from Cassini, said goodbye and started its 20-day trek to the surface of Titan. With the help of Cassini, scientists were able to confirm that Titan actually has liquid on the surface. Liquid. Not liquid water, but a liquid. Ethane. Not pure liquid ethane, but this is still huge. So Cassini's been hanging out in Saturn's neighborhood for quite some time now. As it orbits the planet, it swings by its many moons, grabbing detailed images and answering a lot of questions. For starters, Cassini got some pretty neat images of Enceladus, one of Saturn's moons. Have you ever seen that big geyser Old Faithful in Yellowstone Park? Sure you have. Well, imagine how excited scientists were when they saw nearly the same thing on the south pole of Enceladus. The geysers of Enceladus don't spit out water, though. It's way too cold there. Instead, the geysers spit out water vapor and tiny ice particles. Even more recently, Cassini swung past Enceladus and grabbed some pretty sharp images. On one of its flybys, Cassini got as close as 50 kilometers. That's about 30 miles to the surface. That's six times closer than when the space shuttle orbits Earth. The Cassini-Huygens mission is still going strong. In April 08, the mission was extended, so that means that Saturn and the moons of Saturn will have to keep posing for at least two more years. Okay, so enough with Saturn, let's move on. Number two, the Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy. That's a mouthful. Or SOFIA, which is much easier to say, is a modified Boeing 747 with room for an extra powerful telescope. Sophia will soon be gazing out in our universe and looking around using infrared technology. Take a look at this image. On the left is a shot capturing visible light, or the light that we can see, around the constellation Orion. On the right is the same shot, but this one captures infrared light around the constellation. Big difference, huh? Being able to capture infrared light can be used to determine the size and composition of newborn stars. This info will also help answer some fundamental questions about planet formation and black holes. What makes a flying telescope so special? Well, I'll tell you. By flying above the lower atmosphere, SOFIA avoids 99% of the water vapor that gets in the way of all those ground-based telescopes. Earthbound magnifiers have their place, but SOFIA gets a clearer image right from the start. Stay tuned, because Sophia is scheduled to start grabbing shots of our galactic neighborhood by mid-2009. Number one, top on the list. NASA's new spacecraft, Orion and Ares. You've all seen the space shuttle before, right? Perhaps you've even seen the space shuttle launch. Well, say goodbye, because the space shuttle is soon retiring. That's right. The shuttle's flying days will soon be over, and considering that that shuttle has been our main means of travel to and from low Earth orbit for nearly 30 years, you might wonder what's going to happen once the shuttle's gone. Well, America will send a new generation of explorers to the moon on NASA's Orion Crew Exploration Vehicle, making its first flights early in the next decade. Orion is part of the Constellation program to send human explorers back to the moon and then onward to Mars, and then to other places in the solar system. Orion will be similar in shape to the Apollo spacecraft, but much larger. The larger size will allow Orion to carry four crew members on missions to the moon, and six on the missions to the International Space Station, or spacecraft heading to Mars. 
For missions to the moon, NASA will use two separate launch vehicles, Ares-1 and Ares-5. The Ares-1 crew launch vehicle will lift the astronauts traveling on Orion to low Earth orbit. The Ares-5 cargo launch vehicle will carry the Earth departure stage and the Altair lunar lander. Orion will dock with the lunar lander while orbiting Earth, and then the Earth departure stage will propel both on their journey to the moon. Eventually, the next generation of astronauts, your generation, will not only travel to the moon, but be on their way to Mars and beyond. Well, that's three for today. Okay, so I think I've worked out a better title for this short yet sweet countdown to the top three. Space. Know it. Still no good. Well, whatever. Countdown's over anyway. So, for NASA Launchpad, I'm Jamie. Catch you next time.